This is Banjo. Today I'm going over the startup procedure for the F-18C in DCS World. The first step will be to enable battery power on the lower right panel. Then start the APU using the switch behind the throttle near the cockpit wall. Once the APU is finished running up, the ready indicator beside the switch will light up, at which point we'll use the engine crank switch to start the right engine. At about this point, the APU finishes running up, so I move the engine crank switch to the right position. Once engine startup has begun, we can see RPM increasing. Once RPM is increased to 25%, bring the right throttle out of the idle detent. The default binding for this is right shift home. The engine RPM will increase as the engine completes its startup, supplying power to the aircraft. As it's getting louder, at this point I'll close the canopy using the switch found over on the right side of the cockpit wall. At this point, the right engine has run up enough that the generator is supplying power to the aircraft, so I'll set the radar mode into operation. It'll remain off until weight on wheels is released anyways, and I'll set the INS into ground alignment position as I'm on the ground and not a carrier. At this point, moving the view forwards, we'll set power to both DDIs and the MPCD using the knobs above the displays. And we'll set power to the HUD using the left rotary knob found below the UFC. Using the rotary knobs on the UFC, we can set a desired preset radio channel for columns 1 and 2. In the example, I dial in manual preset on columns 1, I clear the frequency, and I dial in the frequency for the ATC at this airbase. By pressing the TACAN button on the UFC, we can enter a TACAN channel. In the example, I clear the scratch pad, select the X band, type 44, then enter. The on-off button on the UFC will enable the system, while the TACAN button on the MPCD will overlay the TACAN information over the display. At this point, as we carry on, we'll start up the left engine by moving the engine crank switch to the left position to begin the engine startup sequence. And as with the right engine, we'll bring the throttle out of the idle detent at 25% RPM, and the default binding for this is right alt home. Now, at this point, we'll move around the cockpit in a circular motion from left to right as we enable systems. And we'll start by enabling the oxygen generation system and then we'll move forward and push the flight control system reset button and then we'll push the takeoff trim button over beside it. As we move forward, exterior lighting can be configured using the rotary knobs ahead of the throttle and the toggle switch will allow you to select between dim, off, or bright, defaulting to the bright position. Set flaps, anti-skid, and hook bypass as required. In the example, I'm set up for field takeoff at half flaps with anti-skid Although I guess I seem to have forgot to set the, the hook bypass into the field position. At this point we'll set our bingo fuel limit using the up and down arrows on the IFI panel. Then set the attitude source to auto and the altitude source as desired, in this case I leave it in barometric. In front of the sticks, set the countermeasure dispenser mode as you desire to either the on or bypass position, in this case I set it to the on position. And underneath the MPCD set power to the RAR. Uncage the standby attitude indicator and set the backup altimeter to field elevation. Dial in the radar altimeter alert as you desire. Some people like to use 370 for a carrier, 200 for a field, in this case I enter. Check position of the wing spread lever and set internal lighting as desired. This panel is clearly labeled with its function, so I'm not going to go into what each rotary does. At this point, the INS will have finished its alignment and we'll be able to see this displayed on the MPCD as OK next to the alignment time. So we'll move the INS mode into NAV, and as we move forward, we'll arm the ejection seat. As I bring my view up, we'd see the flashing faults on the uh, bit failures page. I'll press the stop button, and then I'll set the DDI pages as desired. In this case, I put the search radar on the right and the SA page on the left. At this point, we're ready to roll out, so I'll release the parking brake, and I'll look in the HUD to make sure nose wheel steering is enabled, as we can see in the corner of the HUD. 
At this point, I can increase power and begin taxiing to the runway.